Pueblo, 1350. Fox Sports Pueblo, 1350. This is the John Riston Show. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Let's join the voices of the pack. Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Along with CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves head coach, John Riston. Everybody. Welcome to Andy Max for the John Riston Show. Great crowd on hand here tonight. It's Are they you. all here for us, it, Joe? Just you and me? It's for you, Jim. Oh, They're okay. waiting for the big so. man. The yeah. big man. Big man's running a little late, but it's the last regular season game of the year, and the uh, Thunderwolves. Surprisingly, Joe, I thought they moved up to third in the nation. There he is. All right, here we come. John Riston is Bring in, him on the in the house. He's got prizes again, too, so you know what that means, folks. If you've got questions he's got the coach, we've got prizes. That'll be in our second segment tonight. And one of them is already spoken. I see the one's autographed there for somebody from last week, so that's a good deal. But uh, once again, we are here at Andy Max. Still plenty of time to get on down here and join us, have something to eat, cold drink. It's a great crowd in here tonight. We'll have to squeeze you in somewhere, but we'll figure it out. We can stand around. The more the merrier. They even put up a little card table over there for Tundra, I notice, in the corner. You know, that's good. The car table for the dog. <laughs> the service animal tonight. John, welcome. Glad to be here. Bet you are. A little cold out there on the field, I bet, tonight, huh? Ooh. Coming here to warm up a little? It was uh, blowing. Brisk. It was more than brisk. Well, you it know what that was, tells you? It uh, tells you it's time for playoff football, almost. Yep. It's, when it gets uh, windy like this. Yeah, it, it was uh, tough to get some things done today because of the wind and and uh, the sheer cold of being able to manage it all through. And but, you know, it, we we fought through it, and uh, you know, it's all about the psychology of coaching and the psychology of your team. And and uh, today we ho- hopefully we got better. All right, we're looking at uh, let's recap last week. First of all, the uh, game against Colorado Mesa, and it was a slugfest for that first half. Back and forth you went. Mistakes made here, mistakes made here by both teams, but uh, kind of evened out by the end of the half. But the second half, you really, uh, really took control of the ball game. Yeah, I think that uh, the first half was about um, as fast and physical a game you're going to see in college football. I think for Division Two, even Division One, I, I was really thought that. Uh, both sides were playing very fast, and and uh, there's some um, different sounds on that field that you don't normally hear. And that sound was about kids colliding with each other and being very physical. And and um, we're we're uh, a little bit sore, and uh, um, so, but it, it it was one of those games where both teams really wanted it, and. Uh, we, it was a lot closer to the, than the score in, indicated what it ended up. But uh, I'm glad the right team came on top. Exactly. I even sent you the text, thanks for that win. Because, you know, with Mesa, Joe, you, you don't have the same vitriol, the hatred for Colorado Mesa that I have through the years. Well, you guys have but built, you've it, watched up. Enough baseball, yeah, you guys but, built it up for, from we were there. being alumni out at, yeah. the, at the school. And, and I, I, I love that rival. Yeah. But, you know, Adams is a, a regional rival. And yeah. UCCS in basketball is kind of a thing. But in baseball, it's Mesa. Yeah. They hate each other. And, and you, you start to see that in football. And a lot of it was very one-sided yeah. that week before. And I had a lot of stuff coming out of the, the Grand Junction camp. And uh, But I will go to Russ Martin's defenses. Everything I read or saw of his on YouTube or whatever, he was very complimentary because he knew what he was coming up against. The players might not. Yeah, have, it was well, a little behind the scenes. They might have feigned, feigned a little, uh, try to get themselves pumped up a little bit. But uh, and, and I think you, John, said it last Wednesday prior to that game is they're pretty good in some areas, and, and you're going to have to play hard in those areas to to match their their physicality or their athletes. Yeah, I think that uh, that game, I, I was concerned about their secondary and their speed, and and uh, I thought their D linebackers flew to the ball uh, with a lot. Um, it was quicker than you can anticipate or practice for. But I, I was worried about that coming to the game, and and uh, I think on uh, offense that um, once uh, Sean and I hate the you know the quarterback that ended up getting hurt, and I, I wish he would have been able to play the whole game, and and I, I I feel bad for him, and so, but their receivers are very fast, and 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 are, but what really to me what took the game over was. Our offensive line and our defensive line, and with those guys, 
that are playing that physical over time, sooner or later something's going to happen, and that's what happened. Just <laughs> it, it, pounding. It, and it was just one of those things that I think over time, because of where our, our defensive front, that means our outside linebackers, it means our inside linebackers, we're, we're attacking and, and being able to get in the right gap. They weren't able to reel off those long drives like they did in the first half. And I really think that is what took the momentum over because they weren't able to convert many third downs in the second half. And with that being said, when they you can't get third downs and we were able to convert some third and fives that we haven't been in the past that second half, I think A.J. really grew up in that area and was able to throw some balls that we needed to. But the offensive line and the tight end and our fullbacks ended up doing a great job of being physical in the third and fourth quarter, and that was able to let us have a chance. Well, when Rubicalba got hurt, it seemed like, almost like it lit a fire under them because it's almost like they said, you know, we need to get more physical in this football game because we got our backup quarterback in. We're going to have to run the ball now. And that drive, after they scored the quick touchdown after the uh, block punt, they got the ball back again and went right down the field, and it was all... Well, I guess it was after you guys got the uh, the safety and the touchdown to go up 16-10. to 10. Then they got the ball back, and they just ran the ball right down the field. And at that point, you had to be going, this could be a long afternoon if they're going to run the football like this. Yeah, it, it was... It was uh I thought it was going to be one of those games go back and forth the way it started. And it's supposed to be all about the defense. It's not letting people score. And uh, sometimes you never goes to the the recipe that everybody says it's going to go to. And But I, I think the way that we responded after that. But I think the key thing was that uh, after they scored, we were able to go down and, and kick that field goal right before halftime to give us that two-point lead heading, heading in. And so I think that re-rallied the troops going into halftime. And, you know, the the whole thing was the, the next really two series are really going to help determine the game, and we were able to well, those, uh, respond to that. Those were those signature drives coming out of the half right, that, exactly. we, that we've talked about all year. You defer, you get the ball in the second half, and then you just seem to just pound on people in that first drive of the second half. And it just, all the adjustments, the freshness, it just seems to, those drives seem to be the best drives of every game. Yeah, and also that the the defense gave up a couple first downs on, on a couple um, third downs they converted. But after that, I, I just remember watching, I still have this image, our defensive line and uh, Ben Estica were able to take those guys and walk them back and put a little pressure on uh, Kaiser, the quarterback. And uh, I, I thought that was probably the difference. Like the bull rush, just physically move them back. And, and that's kind of what we try to do is try to coach that. And, and uh, then, then you're able to have Morgan with a little speed rush to get, be able to get those things done. But um, it, th- those are big factors in that game. Well, I thought one of the key plays that might have got overlooked in the game also was uh, the stop. I don't know if it was third down in a yard or fourth in a yard when you stopped them on the short yardage play and forced the fumble. I mean, that was a huge hit right there in the middle of the jar of the ball loose. Big swing of momentum right there. Yeah, in, anytime we, we, I think we were plus two or three in, in the turnover, uh, plus two in the turnover in big games like that, you, you have an opportunity. Mace has been living down that all right. year. They're plus 19 going in that game, and that's kind of unheard of. You, you know? That was you guys last year. Yeah, so, you, you, you know, those are the things that are so important to the formulas of winning a game. And it's so hard winning a game. And, I mean, I, I hope the CSU Pueblo fans <laughs> understand yeah. that because what these kids are doing is, is really special. And it, it, it just, it, it, it's hard. And uh, I'm proud of everybody that touches this program for what those kids are doing. My favorite play of the game, it wasn't a scoring play. It was just that pass from A.J. Thompson to Radabaugh in between 
I mean, I, I can't even describe the coverage, but it was it couldn't have been thrown any more perfect. And right down and it, the seam. And it couldn't have gone, I mean, it had to be a perfect pass, and it was. And it wasn't for five yards. I think it was 36 yards or something. It was, But it was the prettiest pass of the day. And he threw a lot of pretty ones, but it was, I, I guess at the time and in, in the coverage, it was a, it was a, just a very mature throw. Well, it, it was one of those things that I think you're talking about the one right before half that right. put us down right. there. Right down the seam. And, uh, you know, they, they were doing some things to cover up number one. One, and uh, we took a shot, and A.J. read it, and he threw a great pass, and uh, Mr. Steady Eddie, Jared Radenbaugh, that did a great job catching him, put us down there in field goal area. You know, I, I, I think I screwed up a little bit there. I, I didn't manage the clock right, and, um, you know, I, I really wanted to kick a field goal with no time left to give him a chance, and... Um, it didn't quite work out that way. Well, you look, talk about Radabaugh. Now we'll digress from the game, but to talk about his career. Here's a guy, the ultimate team guy, comes in this school, wants to be a quarterback, right? Well, you realize I'm not going to be a quarterback here. So he says, well, I'll be a you know, flanker. And he does that, does all the special teams work. This year he's not catching a lot of balls, but when you need him to catch a ball, he's there. He's always in the right position. Plus he blocks. He is an incredible downfield blocker, as all your receivers are. That's one thing about Cooper, he does too, it blocks so well. I tell you what, all our receivers are really playing outstanding. And I, I, I'd venture to say that every team we play in the RMAC wish they had our receivers. And I'm saying that for a political standpoint of when all these, all leagues come out, because we don't have as many catches, but I tell you, we have more wins. And that's more important to our, our team is the wins. And those guys are a perfect illustration of doing all that. Well, and then the uh, passing game, I thought one of the prettiest plays of the game was probably the one that salted away for good was the little the little wheel route to O'Malley coming out of the back. Now, you came out with a new formation this week, kind of that full house backfield. I always have struggled to come up with a looks like a reverse wishbone when you have the tailback lined up behind the quarterback. You got two both fullbacks out there. That was new this week that I remember or he played it a lot and it, that play worked beautifully there. Yeah, we uh, we were able to do some different things and we wanted to experiment with some of our personnel groups and and uh, I've always thought that formation is a, a great formation for us. It gives us some flexibility on some different things. But it gets our, uh, you know, it takes some stress off our tight ends. It takes uh, some stress off our receivers a little bit. But it's it's able to get two very good football players in the game. And that's what we're open to. That's Grant Neal and Patrick O'Malley. It's, right. ni- it's nice to see the growth of Patrick O'Malley this year. I mean, Grant Neal probably played more than Patrick last year, probably a lot more if you go back and look at minutes but Grant was hurt this year and Patrick stepped in and it seems like from my opinion my eye it seems like he has grown as a player and that was it, that was great speed for a, a yeah. running back not just a fullback plus the great hands well he blew by the nemesis that was the uh, toughest guy on the field I think for Mesa that safety that he ran right by there well it it, it, uh, it was well designed by our, our offensive coaches coach Eklinski and coach Shaw and uh, you know coach Sammy Sewell's done a nice job of uh, holding those guys together and it's um, it, those guys are so important. They're just like the wide receivers that probably don't get enough credit for the success of our team, but they they are very very much important for uh, any success for any organization. To have those guys that don't get all the recognition, but still play their tail ends off on it. Now we seems like we talk about offense. Well, I feel like we're shortchanging the defense, but offense is sexy, John. The option play, gorgeous for the touchdown there. What you bring out the option, looking like the old Oklahoma option. Tony Wright and I, during the commercial timeout, were thinking back about Oklahoma with Tom and Lott, you know, running that option with all those guys. I mean, that was just beautiful. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, we we had been doing that a couple weeks before, and we brought it out, and we thought everybody was going to run with uh, Cam, just like we thought. That's what happens when you have the nation's leading rusher there. Right. So A.J. uh, read it right, gave a little little flash fake, and uh, it was able to go really untouched in the end zone. Well, and A.J. had a couple other good runs in that ball game, too. You know, he had the interception early. I think he was trying to just bite off a little bit more than he wanted there. He had the underneath route open. He probably looked at that, I'm sure, and felt, well, you take that 10-yarder instead of going for the 20-yarder. But after that, pretty uh, pretty flawless game. Well, you, you know, we always or I always talk about the ebb and flows of the game. How, how about that scenario? We, we get a punt block coming out of the end zone. They come back and score. 
and then on our first our next play we throw an interception so not only did we give up a score they got the ball back but the quality of our defense right. was able to step up as a huge stop and uh, we, that's that's a mark of a championship team is to be able to manage those ebbs and flows and be able to um, withstand that and take a punch or two or three yeah. and then find find a way way to go win a ball game. All right, we are at Andy Max, John Riston show. We've got, we've got a great crowd in here tonight. If you've got questions for the coach in this next segment, if you want to come up and win one of these uh, gorgeous national championship footballs, you have to come up here. State your name. Give us the question. You can win one of those. We've also got a bunch of questions lined up on the text as well. 719-671-7574. 719-671-7574. We'll get to those when we come back. After this time out, John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo, 1350. Duncan in motion to the right side of the formation, trying to get a mismatch over on the edge. And they're going to run the option to the right. Fake the pitch. Here's Thompson. Five touchdowns. They run the old-fashioned Oklahoma option right there, and it worked to be perfection. That's what you get when you have Cameron McDonald in the backfield. He... Oh, I love that play, Johnny. The option play back at CSU Pueblo. None of this drop-back passer stuff. Let's get the quarterback out there on the edge and doing something. And A.J. Thompson, he gives us both the best of both worlds, isn't it? Well, uh, we sure could do that with Chris Bonner. <laughs> no. So, you know, everybody would laugh at us. A we wanted bit. to ask you about about AJ when when the when plays are designed for him to run, he seems a lot more comfortable than when he has to run. And is that something that you're working with his growth in? Because he can get away from anybody. You, you know, I think uh, AJ is just figuring this out and I'm not meaning that in a bad way uh, I just mean that when he wants to do something he is very athletic to go do it and so I'm really looking forward to his growth about making those decisions it's about making those decisions and sometimes when you're young you think you can go right and you should go left instead of just reacting and going and uh, I saw a few times on Saturday that he was just going and um, but the thing about that that we forgot to talk about I really think is um, the opening drive of the game Oh, yeah. And it was uh, 95 yards. Right. And he had a big third down conversion. We had a big screen play. Mm -hmm. They blitzed us, and he stood in there. The Cam. And, and Cam handled it. And we, uh, Gary Dixon and Zach Martinez out there rolling them up. And Zach Boyd was leading them down. And, and uh, But the key block was that on was DeAndre Cooper. Right. He was coming in there cracking, and, and uh, the guys blitzed, and he kept climbing, made the safety go over the top on it. And so those little things like that. It really what adds up play after play after play that leads to what the score ends up at the end of the game. And I've always talked to our guys about just put your head down, go to work. doesn't have to be perfect. We roll up your sleeves, go get the next play, and ho hopefully we can ma make it better. All right. You know what we should thank here? Derek Stickler's here, one of your Kairos that comes over your guest. He's looking around for a place to sit. Anybody got a place to sit for Derek over here? He's wandering around the bar from Longevity Chiropractic. Yeah, go over and sit with Tundra there. You got Derek. everybody to be quiet. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Just, they they want to know who that guy is. For the chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, he's magic hands for me. Yeah. I, I, I don't need to go any further. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But I, I think think part of that game too was the crowd that was involved in it and so uh, I, I really appreciate the, the fans that brought things to make noise and, and our, uh, our uh, red shirts were bringing sticks to pound on the floor and you know you come to a football game it's very important for you to get into it and a, a bunch of our fans were doing that some of our fans didn't like it uh, but you know I, you're there to right. enjoy it you're there to have a lot of noise and and uh, we need noise. And um, um, I'm sorry to 
that some fans <laughs> upset don't some that fans that just want to sit but, there on their hands. Well, that's tough. But there's one out of a thousand in that those sections. So <laughs> I, I just really appreciate people bringing noise and and having fun with it and supporting uh, the Pac football players. Well, some of our uh, questions that we have here tonight. If you want, got a question for me on the text message six seven one seven five seven four. If you're in the house and got a question, we got a couple of footballs here. You have to come over and uh, do the question right over the air. We got a microphone ready for you. Uh, one of the uh, listeners here, Joe, listener four, I've got them labeled. Uh, they love the noisemaker sticks, love the noise, loved everything about the atmosphere at the ball game. And uh, also, uh, let's see what else she's got here. Or it might be a he, I've noticed. Redshirt freshmen sitting in the stands this year, they received the help with the student section and making a lot of noise. Was this a plan change, or are they really no longer allowed on the field? It, uh you know what we experienced last year with the playoffs where they cannot be on the sidelines uh i thought added to the atmosphere of the game and so this year i wanted to experiment with them being in the stands and being the rest of the students and, and involving yeah. all them so it, th this was a planned choice not a have to and ho hopefully we have one more home game or a couple more home games three more home games four i don't yeah, know, be I, nice, I, wouldn't it? I don't know how this is all going to shake out but uh they, they're all, all be in the stands at that point here's a question that probably not under your pay grade here but wants to know how the attendance is counted at the thunder bowl now joe you may know i'm sure they all seats sold they're going to say they're there whether they're there or not but so that's why we see a few empty seats here or there we you and i've had conversations about this before but uh i thought this crowd not quite as big as the mines crowd but they were just as into it it seemed like uh you know, I, I believe they count attendance by who walks through the gate. I don't know any different. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how they do. Maybe I, I actually thought this us. was a better crowd. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I thought, thought this was a better crowd. Okay. Than mine's, and I thought they were well, as far as into it. Definitely, they were. but you know, and and let's be honest. That first half, there was a lot to be into. I mean, both sides of the ball, it was kind of fun to. I mean, it was, it, yeah, it was a it was a great football game. Everybody's excited to be there, and and. and and it was just good football and the hard hit like John said it was hard hitting we can hear it from where we sit with it, we take the headset off and you just hear things you're yeah. like wow that, that that's coming right there exactly. but I, I, I think that we, it was a bigger crowd than mine okay the truth. It, Eight, more than 8,000 yeah so I think um, although uh, obviously we have season tickets and all the season tickets count as sold whether they go or not but uh, you know all those Thunder Hill and people standing right. up a lot of people stand up and watch the game from uh, up top right. I guess I, I don't really see it or, or, or feel it because they're all behind me because you're working yeah well Joe and I've had it there with they should have you're working it'd be nice to have a, a ticket exchange type deal if you knew you weren't going to go to the game if you could give up your tickets for somebody else to buy now you couldn't get a refund on them but be just be nice enough to say you know what here's my tickets sell them again or and just be use like them. that give them to somebody sounds to like use. that's another job for jim brooks that sounds like something else i should get involved yeah, in I said yeah, like something else i can get involved in here's another easier question for you a, a softball but although they don't give you softballs all the time madison and abigail our favorites what is the, this is a good one for you what is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to coach wriston during a game <laughs> Oh, during a game? In a game? During a game. Uh, uh, during the game. Um, I don't know if I can say this on the air, so I, I will be glad to address that with you, <laughs> you two, one on one. All right, the second most embarrassing thing then. Well, I, I think that uh, during um, my my first time being a head coach, you know, this is Pan, Pan Andal State, um, or that season, that we're our last game versus Adam State and we had a chance to be 500 yes, did. and um, we called a trick play and our guy was so wide open and I saw it and I kind of bent down and I was through my head set back off and the cord it wrapped around my <laughs> neck and I, I got a head rush from coming up so fast, I started seeing the little birds that were flying around. Strangled yourself you know? underwater, basically. And um, 
I, I had to call a timeout because I couldn't get the play in. And so that's really embarrassing, Madison Abigail. Don't ever embarrass yourself like Coach Rissen did because a guy overthrew the ball and do those things. So that was a great question. Thank you. Uh, but I'll, I'll fill you in one-on-one. It's okay, that'll be good. We'll, be, we'll look forward to that. And then uh, finally, the last question I have on the message is, uh, who makes up the uh, scout team? How do you decide who's on the scout team? Well, I, I think it's a, a matter of uh, one uh, young freshman and young guys that are all that uh, are not basically in our top 65, 70 guys. And so it, it, there's a lot of different combinations to that. There's a lot of different um, factors that go into it. Uh, but it basically boils down. We're, we're going to try to develop guys that we don't feel are part of our, our top 70 or so. And, you know, it, it's a ever, it's always a liquid process. It's always moving a little bit. Um, so it, we just want guys that want to come and try to develop and try to get better on, on, on a daily basis. Whether you are a starter or you're a scout team guy and you're working to develop yourself in the system. It's hard being a scout team guy. And I think we have the best scout teams in America. I really do. These guys do such a great job. I think part of the way we practice we don't try to wear them out and to have them go play after play after play. We got enough depth for people to be be able to be surrounded by that. So uh, I really appreciate what those scout teams do, and it's very very helpful for our success of our our program. Now, do they actually have meetings as a scout team to go over the game? They do everything separately, or yeah, they, part of the team. Well, we for them um, when we meet on. Uh, Monday, we, we meet together as a team on Monday, give the itinerary for the whole week, and then they go lift while the guys are watching game tape. And then on uh, Tuesdays, that uh, when we're installing the game plan during meeting time, Alan is uh, and Tony are taking them through some running, try to develop some speed, some agility type of thing. So we gain that year by working out. Instead of meeting, they're working out and doing some different things. So they lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then on Tuesday, Thursday, they do some uh, running. And uh, some of the stuff that we do, will do in the off season in, in spring ball before we go to spring ball, I guess. And we try to give them a head start of that development. Is there an example of somebody, just to follow up that question a little bit, who was a great scout team player that's developed into a player player? Well, I, I, you, you could name all our starters. Tony Campton. Uh, all the guys that are fifth-year guys were all scout team. Tony Campton was one of those guys. Uh, Zach Martinez, Gary Dixon, uh, Corbin Feinster. Uh, all our offensive linemen, basically. Um, and you're pretty hard on your scout team guys to give good looks. And now, if, if, if people hear scout team, it's not as physical as you think. I mean, they, they hit, but it's, it's more to get the looks. And you, you, you and your staff take great pains to make sure those looks are right. And if a scout team guy is missing, if he's five, two yards off of where he's supposed to be or makes a wrong cut or gets a bad snap, they act like they're part of the team because they get chewed on pretty good. And that's and I think that, that that helps make them feel like they're important. Well, I, I, I don't know if it may, helps them make them feel them, them any important or any less, but you are held accountable for your job. You have a job description, and it says on that card what you're supposed to do. If you go ha- – and I really judge kids a lot of times when they're doing that um, as, as a guy that, that's either going half-ass or not. And it really shows up on, on special teams. It does all those things. And I think I spend more time trying to get the scout team right than I do coaching because if you don't get the look, you can never practice what you want to get practiced and execute it. So those are the things that I that are I think our uh, younger coaches do a great job. They do walkthroughs to try to explain. Bringing it back to a scout team guy, you know, Steph Dickens. Yeah. Steph Dickens was one heck of a scouting player. Middle of the year, we're playing mines, and uh, I just went to him and said, Hey, uh, if you want to continue to be red shirt, we'll let you red shirt. Uh, but we, we really think you can come in and help us play. And sure enough, the son of a gun is, yeah. is a all, all great player. Darius Williams last year, uh, Zach uh, Young, um, Norris Angola. 
uh, a lot of those guys that are playing now as redshirt freshmen were all scout team guys and got noticed because they were doing things right and they had a great work ethic to them. All right. We're a little long here, but that's all right. We'll make it up on the other side. John Riston Show. We are here at Andy Max. Still time to get on down here. Join us for the after party. It's a got big a crowd here tonight. Here. Got a microphone for live questions. Still got two. Joe, hold one of those footballs up. See what you got a chance. If you just come over and grab a microphone and give John Riston a great question, you win one of these footballs. Isn't that cool? All right. He'll Think about sign it. it for you. you got and four, he'll personalize it. you got a little four-minute time out here to gather yourself and come up with that question. This is the John Riston Show. We are at Andy Max on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo, 1350. Any time here. It's first and goal from the two. 7.20 to go here in the first half. Thunderwolves lead at 16-10. to 10. Student section trying to make some noise down here, but it's kind of half-hearted. It's Mesa. It's the Mesa. As they've seen this Mesa offense. Thompson under center. Bernard's back in the ball game here. Radov on the slot to the left. Two tight ends on the right side. Three tight ends, actually, on their stack. Take the draw play. Thompson rolls right. He's got all kinds of room. He goes to the back of the end zone with a pass. Touchdown! I can't tell if that's Michael Riston or Zach Boyd. Man, we're looking into that sun. It's impossible to see over there. Aaron Eckhoff, I can't see that far. He never did find out until after the dang timeout was over. Who got the touchdown? Well, it's Riston. And then I thought, so they no, came back Zach and said, Boyd. Boyd Zach Boyd. Well, it's one of your interchangeable tight ends, John. you got oh. so many of them, and they're all wearing the same number that's with an eight starting in front of it there. but Well, they, they were both really wide-ass open. Yeah, they were. The call, that's right. So that's why you had a trouble deciphering it. So uh, I'm glad he threw it to Zach. That was a nice play for A.J. and throw it to Zach. And uh, they were all bit on the play fake, and A.J.'s done a nice job with that. And so You're, like, you're the, talking to coaches in the RMAC. You, they're all envious of your 13 person of the three tight end set. Uh, talking to Jeff Mills from Highlands this week, he goes, Man, we don't have one tight end. I wish we had two. We we have we have one barely, and John can run three out there and just present so many problems yeah. with that. Thir- and I know you love thirteen personnel with three tight ends because you just they're so athletic and they're so strong. Yeah, it's just a it's a, it's a tough matchup. Well, it it it's nice because of those reasons you just yeah, described. I, I mean. Uh, People don't like playing with tight ends. Well, we're going to recruit as many tight ends as we can. Yeah. And, and fullbacks. Uh, but I, and, and, Josh Bradle came as a tight end. <laughs> but the thing about it is you saw that we were able to get guys like Kieran Duncan one-on-one. And you get Kieran Duncan one-on-one in space, good things happen. Right. And so how about Kieran Duncan's catch on uh, oh, that right one on the, the sideline? Side Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, that was one of the big-time plays that we're able to, you know, big-time players step up in big-time games. And Kieran Duncan's one of those guys. And he did, that was just a one-handed stab with the left hand. And you got a great view of it. It's right down there in front of you. It was, it was, I go, oh, my gosh. I met his mom after the game, and she said, Mr. Serby. <laughs> so I went over and she goes, you wrote when my son was a freshman that he needed to grow in because he was too skinny to play at this level. I said, well, that was four years ago. <laughs> it's in Benway. Look at him now. She, so he, they keep it in the vault, Oh, Joe. my God. He's still skinny, though. Yeah, but, <laughs> but and, I, and, and, you know, I'm on dead. I'm talking, trying to track down players. And I'm getting yelled at by somebody's mom. And I'm like, well, you know. And, and he, you know, and Kara's like, you know, my mom is always right. And he says that way she's standing there. Exactly. Oh. Never doubt your mom. No. Exactly right. Let's talk. Well, one of the things to finish up the wide receivers, the Coop Show. Got Hollywood. Pretty, pretty, good, pretty good right cross there. Got him. <laughs> but, you know, I watched the replay of it, uh, the, the television replay, and. He was locked up pretty good with that guy, and that guy was shoving him pretty good in his little hands in the face action, and Cooper kind of ended it, didn't he? But well, it was a great block. It was one of the blocks that enabled the touchdown to be scored. That's the one thing I admire about uh, Cooper is uh, DeAndre is the ability to block down the field. Well, I, I tell you, I, I'm a big DeAndre Cooper fan, and uh, I was really disappointed in that 15-yarder um, and he, he knew it. He, he knew it. He made a mistake. But I think that 15, Burrell kid, uh, he and uh, Coop were having a battle all yeah. day long. And so uh, something was said. Something happened. And we went 
pass the whistle. And that's not the way pack football is played. And DeAndre knows it. And so uh, he addressed it. And, and we're uh, fortunate that, uh, that it didn't cause any more uh, damage during that time. And making it, those are selfish penalties at those times. Those selfish penalties get you beat. Well, we know she had a little little love in with him down there on the sideline. Joe and I are kind of watching. Go, yeah, I think they're straightening it out right now. And you guys seem to part ways understanding that, hey, this is the way it's got to be. All you need to know about DeAndre Cooper is how he spent last year. Yeah. I mean, if you if you ever have to question a guy's character, yeah. you just see how DeAndre Cooper got hurt in the middle of last summer, cost him his season, and he was at every practice, at every game, road trips with that bad leg, national championship, and, and so if you if you want to check the character trigger of that yeah. guy, just see how he spent last year. Right. And, and, and that always happened. It was nice to have his mom out here after what he's gone through. And and uh, I know that senior day and it was important for him. And it was important for him to get a victory. And I know he wanted to catch the ball or stuff. But, you, you know, well, sometimes it doesn't come to you. But you got to do your job and do it to the best ability. And DeAndre Cooper is one of those kids. Well, John, I noticed we've got a lot of shy people in here tonight. We still have two of these footballs over here. All you got to do is come grab the mic. Ask John a question and win one of these footballs. I, I, I do have to say there's uh, two fans here that will make it down to Las Vegas, New Mexico. That's a tough trip. That will be able to see all 11 of our games, and I think they're super wow, fans. that's great. great. To being able to do that. And that's uh, Wayne and, and Ted over there, and it, it's awesome for them, them to be a big, big part of it. So, you know, all thank 11. you for your support. Thank you for bringing some noise, and keep bringing the noise here. And the smartest move they ever did was yeah. not have the nachos. It's Spearfish. Spearfish. We just were hoping, something else. We just were hoping that John didn't, oh, he didn't nibbled on a little bit. We're like, man, if he gets it because of us, we'll never hear the end. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That would have been terrible, wouldn't it? Have been? Yeah. Well, so gonna, this microphone's still here. It's still here. It's that's still that's waiting. That's Two footballs. Who's got a question? Wayne's, Wayne's got, a, got question. a question. He wants one of these footballs. That's that's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. I actually, I actually don't need a football. Coach got me an autograph one last year, and I thank you very much. I just, my question is, it's not even a question. It's one of my patented statements. Las Vegas, New Mexico is three hours down I-25. It's the easiest road trip you're going to make. So, Pueblo, if you're listening and you're a Pac fan, get your butt to Las Vegas and back to Pac so we can get this RMAC title out right. Hey, there we go. That's there what we like. It. I, That's hey, way to go, Wayne. Nice. nice. I like that. If you go Appreciate early, it. you can go to Charlie Spickens, man. That's right. If you don't, then just go right to the Some game. Some of the best tortillas around. Without question. One of the pictures uh, when we were eight there two years ago came up on my Facebook. Yeah. The old memory thing right. came up with that big monster burrito. Hey, we Unbelievable. Got another, we got there we go. We got a question. Let's see. You might want a football. Does, does Las Vegas, Nevada, or Las Vegas, New Mexico have enough seats to seat the crowd that's going to show up at this football game? Yes, they do. There'll be plenty of seats, and you'll be able to hear every word that's said on the sidelines. So, all right. Well, good job there. Would you like a football there, Bugman? Uh, all right. Keep it for the next. Here's somebody who wants a football. Oh, we, got a, we got a question here. Yes. Now this this is real easy. This is radio. There's 10 million people listening to us tonight. Are you ready? Uh, hold All right, it, maybe 10,000. Hold it close to your hold mouth. It right close. Say your name. Oh, he's got to remember the question here. Mom is helping him. Hold, it, right. hold it close to your mouth. What's right. your name? Nate. Nate, Nate what? He's been here a regular uh, at the show. All right, Nate, All what's right. your question? What? What's your question? Uh, it's good for Nate. How's the long snapper doing? Oh, good question. Good question. I, I appreciate you asking Thanks, that question. All right. Uh, see these circles underneath my eyes? <laughs> yeah. not sleeping because I, I wish he was, uh, he's doing a lot better. He's not going to be able to play this week, and uh, we're, we're hoping to get him back in a week. But you realize how important that guy is when we miss him. And so, uh, Nate, thank you for recognizing Jake Ludwig and your question, and I appreciate your support, all right? Here, here's a ball for you, There Nate. you go, Nate. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. All right, we're Thank gonna take this time out. out. We'll come back. We're gonna talk about Highlands. Plus, we got one more football to give away. We'd rather give away the football and talk about Highlands, but uh, we'll do whatever we got to do here to finish off this show. John Riston show here at Andy Max on Fox Sports Pueblo. Fox Sports Pueblo, thirteen fifty. Down and goal from the six for the Thunder Wolves. Bernard Delone back here. Triple tight end set to the right. They're unbalanced that way. They're going to hand it back, cutting back across the grain. Bernard breaks the tackle to the end zone. Touchdown! Oh, and there's some push 
Pushing and shoving after the play. A punch is thrown by the Thunderwolves. That's going to be a dead ball personal foul against CSU Pueblo on Cooper as he took a late shot at somebody right across the chops. He might get ejected for that one. Fair and love and war, right? Well, well that's right play. cross. That's the play we were just talking right, about. Right, exactly. I think Tony found it. He said, well, let's bring that play up and let's listen to it right you there. You just but hope the official didn't see the, the swing. Yeah. You know, I, you I, just I, hope because cause then you lose him for this week. Yeah, this is a quick. It was more of a jab. Well, you didn't poke him in the eye like he <laughs> keeps the lead. But. God. <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, I, there was a, a swing, Joe. Okay. Yeah, it was just a jab, jab step. Oh, worked all right. Officially, they call it. The officials are always right. That's right. That's right. So, so but, call it. but how, how how about that run uh, that he had uh, at really, the end there, the 43 yard. Yeah, that yeah, that was, was probably the amazing. best run. And it was funny when you talk about our three tight ends, and he goes across the formation, the safety goes across, and and uh, there's no one to fit that gap, and that's how we're able to get those things. And Coach Shaw and, and Heck and Sammy and Jake Novotny have done a great job of uh, devising formations and game plans for us to be successful that way. And so people have a hot, tough time fitting those things. How's his health? Excuse me? How's Bernard's health? Better. Better than what it was last week. I, I, so, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of beat up. Um, so we'll... Uh, We'll go down to the Highlands and, and try to play one hell of a ball game so we can win our fifth straight. Is that your biggest concern right now? Is yes. just the health of your team? My, I, that's why I was a little bit late. I was in a counseling session of trying to uh, manage this thing through. You know, part of coaching is not so much X's and O's. It's, to me, it's helping kids manage adverse situations. And it, college football is hard, and you're going to get – dinged up and it's how you manage through that and not everybody handles it the same way and so it's very difficult on a coach is to try to help say everybody should handle it the same way and so you got to spend some time you got to have faith in your uh, medical people which I do I think Nick Harmon does a great job and I appreciate uh, uh, our, our doctors that, that do unbelievable job and so everybody that touches our, our kids are so important. You know, at our acupuncture with Zach Colvin, or uh, Zach Gray has done, done an absolute great job and, and being able to have the chiropractors come in and do some different things is, is really, really, really helped us. And, you know, I, I don't know if I give that enough credit, but those, those are all the reasons why I think our kids are, are playing fast at the very end and have an opportunity to go 5-0. and oh, well, Five speak, straight RMIC champions. Well, speaking of fast, Mexico Highlands, they're finishing fast. They had a rough yep. start to this year, but the last two weeks they've come out with a couple of victories. They've improved quite a bit this, this last month, haven't they? You know, they're, 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 they're hitting their... They're, you know, they've done a great job of keeping those kids together. You know, I, I, I think that that coaching staff has held those guys together and kept being positive with them. And so I think it's really, really a credit to what, what they've done. And so those kids have won the last two, and they, they're sky high. And, and uh, there, there's not a, one of them that don't think they can come beat us. And um, they're excited for us to go play down there, and they're looking forward for this opportunity to go compete. And um, I, I know it's going to be one hell of a ball game. Do you have ties with Jeff Mills at all? No. That's strange that you don't have a tie with... Well, I, I know he's worked with a couple guys. That, right. He worked with Brian Carball. And uh, um, so it, it, it's... I, I really... You know, he's a Division One coach for a long time. And uh, he's, he's energetic. He's doing their things the right way. I mean, this is a program to be reckoned with in, in the future. And it's a program we got to reckon with on Saturday. Well, physically, I think you guys probably have them outmatched but playmakers they've got some guys that can make some plays you just watch some of their highlight reel things i mean they got some speed they got some guys that can hurt you deep uh they got some guys that fly around on defense they got pop or problems they can pose you well you, you know i i think that if you go to media day like joe did the two of the better looking kids there were the two kids from highland and uh it was uh howard the linebacker number eight and then uh uh terry the receiver 
and they, they were out, outstanding looking kids. And then um, Marshawn, Marshawn Lynch's brother is a starting running back for them, and uh, he is a, uh, a load, and um, we're going to have to rally. Mini, mini beast mode? Yeah. Not the full beast, but he's getting there. Yeah, he's, he's a good football player. Well, what, what do you look for in this type of ball game? I mean, when you go into it, what's the number one thing you're saying? Hey, we got to take care of this going into this ball game. What are you looking for? You know, what, what I want to do is take care of us and understand that the whole deal is focused on the six inches between our ears and the competition that we have with ourselves. We go and we handle our, our business with ourselves. That's our whole task. I, I can't worry about what Highland's going to do. But I, I, I really want us to have uh, understand what the discipline of the task at hand is going one and all. And so I, I want them to be very focused on what we do. And we, we had a good practice yesterday. Today was tough in the wind being able to to manage that whole thing and you know but our, our kids and our seniors our inner circle those guys are, are, are not going to let this slip and we're looking forward to going down to highlands playing you know going one and all this week and that's the the task that we uh, address each other is about the opportunity to go on one and all and then we'll see what happens sunday all right well as wayne said here so appropriately it's an easy three mile or three hour drive down the uh, road i-25 to come watch the uh, thunderwolves hopefully win another rmac title outright and uh, we look forward to it we'll have the ball game for you here on fox sports Pueblo, 130 with the pregame two o'clock kickoff from Las Vegas, New Mexico. People to thank, everybody here at Andy Max. Thanks for the big crowd here tonight. All of our listeners have sent us in questions. And uh, Joe, thank you. Hey. Thanks to John Riston. Thanks to Tony Wright, who will be at Dutch Clark Stadium on Friday night for the East Ball game against Lewis Palmer playoffs right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. For everybody involved with the John Riston Show, I'm Jim Brooks. Good night, everybody. Go Pack. We'd like to imagine.